So if you're out in the garden working and you see one of these guys staring back at you, these next tips I'm going to give you is what's going to help you get rid of these guys, both safe and effectively. All right, welcome back to another Grow the Earth today. Today we're going to be talking about ants. Now some of these are the world's worst enemy for a gardener. You know, they always invade your beds, they, they come in at the worst time, they want to get around your plants. Uh, then you go in and you try and do some weeding or whatnot and you get a, a whole handful of ants. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing. So, what I'm going to go over today are a couple of safe and effective ways to get rid of these ants. And not only are one of my tips will actually keep them at bay for pretty much the rest of the year if you use that simple trick. Now the first thing we can start off with is probably one of the simplest things. Now I would only use this if you have ants that are in a pile that is kind of secluded from your bed or something that is not near any of your plants. And that is going to be simply a pot of boiling water. You get a pot, you get that thing ripping hot with some water in it, come out, pour it on top of your ant beds. Now pour it slowly because of course we have an ant bed is your hill and then you still have what is underneath that, the subterranean area and that is where your queen is going to be at. She's going to be in the heart of that hill. She's not going to be up top, you know, to where you can disturb it, but she's going to be down in the bottom. So we need to pour that water slowly over the top of that ant hill and make sure it gets all the way deep down into the ground and it's basically going to scold them and they will die. Now, as far as effective, safe, good for the environment, and so forth, it checks all the boxes. Now, that is one of the ways that we can combat ants in our garden. But again, if those ants are up or in, a, in the middle of a, a patch of uh, lettuce, or say they're growing up next to your tomatoes or something like that, you don't want to use that method because not only will that boiling water kill those ants, but it's going to scold your roots and it will more than likely it will kill your plant. Because that extreme amount of heat, you know, 200 plus degrees on those roots is going to kill that plant. So we don't want to use that around any type of plant that you're worried about killing. Now, on the inverse, this will also do really good at killing weeds. Because again, it's going to scold those roots and it's going to kill those weeds. So, that's one way that we can get rid of ants. The second way is actually through cornmeal. Now, a really fine ground cornmeal, the plants, the, the ants will take in because they want the calories, they want that. They love cornmeal, they love the sweet corn, especially the cornmeal that we have here in the States that has a, a lot of glucose in it, a lot of gluten in it they will hoard that stuff, but their bodies can't process that. So they will take it into their, in there, they get the queen and they will eat it, and effectively they will get blocked up, they can't eat anymore and they die. Now it's a horrible thing to say, but it is safe, it is effective. Um, and again, it's going to get all the way down to that queen, which is one of the simplest ways to kill an ant hill is you kill the queen. Uh, because by her direction is how the rest of the ant hill knows what to do. And if you kill her, they have no reason to continue doing what they're doing because they do everything for that queen. You know, they go out and they gather food, they, they defend the hill and everything for that queen and that queen alone. When you remove that, they have no reason to do any of that and they will basically, they will starve themselves to death and, and die. All right, so our next one we're gonna talk about is one that is good for, to put in your garden if you've just got a couple of scout ants running around. Now you, you won't see a, uh, an ant hill anywhere in your garden bed, but you'll notice when you're out, you know, either pulling weeds or pruning or gathering your vegetables, gathering your fruits, you'll see, you know, a dozen or so ants kind of running around and they kind of look like they're, you know, they're just kind of running around and looking at things. 
um, they don't really, they're not in mass and they, they just kind of are looking at stuff around your garden bed. What they're for is they go out from a hill somewhere, you know, within your yard, I would assume, and they're looking for, you know, maybe a better place to live. They're looking for food, especially they're looking for food. And once they locate a food source, they will go back to the hive or the anthill and they will bring others in mass in order to retrieve that food source to bring it back to the anthill. And this kind of works off of that. And that is what we've got right here. Now this is a mixture of borax, which is actually very harmful to ants. Uh, baking soda and pancake syrup with a little bit of water in it. And then we put it in a container. Now, this is a juice container that we, you know, this is one of the juices we normally buy in these small containers like this. You can use this, you can use a, uh, a soda bottle, you know, a bottle of, uh, you know, whatever your favorite soda is, a, a Coca-Cola, a Sprite, Dr. Pepper, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you buy two liters of it, you can use two liter bottles. Uh, or it could just simply be a bottle of water, you know, a water bottle. Doesn't matter. It just needs to be a plastic container that has a cap to it. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix those components that I just listed out, and I'll actually put them in the description, and you're going to pour it into your bottles. Now the key here is the sugars that are in here will make them want to come in and get that sugar, and they're going to get some of that borax with it, and they're going to get some of that, that, um, that baking soda with it but we have to have a way for them to get in here, in here. And we have these three holes on each side, you know, above the level where that liquid is at, and it's small enough to let ants in, but not so big that we're gonna let our bees in, because all of this stuff is also toxic to bees, so you don't want this just kind of put out on the ground or in a dish, it's open because if the bees come and get it, they will die and you'll start killing off our bees, which are very important, not only to our garden, but just to earth in general, because a lot of our pollination is done by bees. So we wanna protect them at all costs. And so we uh, just drill some little eighth inch holes in here and just set that guy in your garden bed. So you can see here, these little eighth inch holes, right there, right there, and right there. Again, those are big enough to let an ant in, but they will not let a bee get in there. And that's the important thing about the way these bottles are designed. Those scout ants will find this, they'll go in the hole because they're wanting to, they can smell that sweetness. They will get it, and they will bring some of it back to their ant hill and they will eventually make it to give it to the queen. Now, this doesn't work quickly, neither do any of the natural methods. The nat well, the quickest one is gonna be your boiling water method, and that's gonna kill on the spot immediately. But this one, the cornmeal, stuff like that is gonna take a little longer. Um, if you don't have all of those ingredients, you can simply use baking soda and sugar or the borax and sugar, and you mix those with a little bit of water. Uh, typically, you want this to be in a paste. Uh, we've mixed a little bit too much water in this, so with the holes, it's going to evaporate, and eventually you'll get a paste. That paste is what you want so that they can bring that back to the hive and share it with others. But we'll take killing our scout ants, because if our scout ants don't make it back, they can't tell them that they've got a food source. So, like I mentioned, um, also one other method that you can do if you actually have a hill, and actually you can just sprinkle this across your whole bed, is going to be a food grade diatomaceous earth. Because that food grade diatomaceous earth 
will actually irritate not only their feet, but if they get it on their bodies, it'll actually start cutting them. Because diatomaceous earth is basically old uh, seashells and so forth that have, have been broken down into a fine dust. And it is like a bunch of little razor blades to uh, slugs, frogs, anything that is soft bodied, or even like ants that have a exoskeleton that will cut them and they will leave the area or it will actually kill them. All right guys, so one thing to keep in mind is that certain of these things that I've mentioned are gonna have to be reapplied after every rain. The bottles and the boiling water, the water is one time, you know, it's not gonna continue to kill those ants after it has already cooled off. And the bottle is protected, so it'll continue to, it, that will help you keep ants out of your beds the whole year until it becomes either all gone or, you know, next, every year we usually make new of that. But if you're using the cornmeal or uh, applying just uh, borax and sugar and um, baking soda directly to a bed, that is going to be a, you know, it's going to work until it rains. And then you'll have to come out and reapply that every time it rains, kind of like a, a BT or a spray treatment of some of your more natural things. Uh, every time it rains, you got to re reapply those and it, you know, it, it takes a little time because you got to reapply those. But again, for my, my bang for the buck, I don't usually have ant hills in my beds. So this is going to be the thing that I'm going to revert back to, you know, these bottles, because I want to be able to do this and do it one time and it keep my beds clear of ants. So guys, as always, I thank you for joining me today. I ask you to pray over your family, pray over your garden, and have a great day.